John chapter 12. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. We're going to play a video for you right here.
Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Speak unto the ancient of days, for none can compare to your matchless worth.
You are my 
I can't make it without you. I'm lost without you. Where would I be without you? Desperate for you. Is anybody desperate for you? To a move. The Lord, we're desperate for you. speaking 
witchcraft spells to be. So today we join in unity and harmony. And in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus and we break it this morning. Oh, come on. Sickness, disease, demonic. Anxiety, depression, demonic. And listen, 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 listen. I'm not saying there's not other reasons for sickness and disease. If you go home and eat a eat three pizzas tonight, you're probably going to get sick. And don't blame that on the devil. You, you, you were just being stupid. Hello, somebody. But I'm talking about demonic. Frustration. Demonic. Anger. What's well, okay? Say amen. Demonic. Frustrated with work. Frustrated with family. Frustrated with your brothers and sisters in Christ. You can say amen to that too. Demonic.
thank you, Lord. I said that we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The name that is above all the names. In the name of Jesus. Every demonic power is broken today. I'm not listening to me. I, I, I understand completely. That's not going to stop old Slewfoot, the dragon, the deceiver, from attacking. I'm just saying, you're not going to have any fruit come out of it anymore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This witchcraft assignment that has been spoken, the spells that have been spoken, and folks, you hear, you're crazy. I, I know I'm not crazy. I know I can listen to me. Listen to me. I worked in law enforcement. I know what I'm talking about. There is a strong underground witchcraft influence in this area. Been here for decades. Your weapons that you have formed against us are no longer prospering. They are broken. In the name of Jesus. Let this be a day of remembrance. Things changed on this day. In the name of Jesus and all the God's people said. Come on, somebody give us one big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Pastor. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Mike and 
Cody on them dummies, them dummies didn't stand a chance. about this. He wants to see God light a fire in all of our hearts. And the word of God can do that. But you can't really light a fire, have God light a fire in your heart if you don't 
get into the word on a regular Hallelujah. basis. Amen. 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 You can't do the whoop and out the door. So, I was really kind of nervous about this. I know that sounds crazy, but I was. I was nervous about the changes that Pastor Dan was making about our Bible studies on Wednesday night. But I went. Talk about a blessing. Amen. Amen. It has been amazing. Yes, ma I thought, well, we're just going to be going over what he talked about in church. Oh, no, 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 no. It is so much more than that. We do, but it is so much more in-depth and so much more personal. And it's really helping to ingrain what we're hearing. If you're not going to a Bible study, at the homes, go. These community Bible studies are awesome. I really encourage you to go. They are, they're fun. We laugh a lot, but we are learning so much. Amen. 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 Well, there you go. And so we're at Jerry and Vicky's house and Jason and Tamara's house. I invite you to cut, get out, 6.30. Okay, if you got to leave early, go ahead and leave early. That's okay. 6.30 to 7.30, snacks, and just a nice, casual atmosphere. And this is, now listen, again, I want to make this absolutely crystal clear. This is not Bible lecture. Okay? I can do Bible lecture. That's not what this is. This is Bible study. Amen? Bible study. It's where we all get to say and dig in. And the church said, Amen. 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 Hi, April. Good to see you this morning. Good to have you. Good to see you too, brother. Josh. <laughs> and guess what? It's good to have you all too. Amen. So let's 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 Hosanna this morning with our tithe and offering. Can we do that? Stand with me. Give the Lord a round of applause for an opportunity to give that done to the Lord. As the church said. Amen. All right, here we go. Excuse me. Freely I have received, therefore I freely give. I choose to give not out of compulsion, but because I love God and I love this church. As I freely sow into God's kingdom, I am receiving God's abundant blessings spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, miraculously, family, and the church says,
can help us remember some, some things that they've learned. So I hope, did you guys bring your brains today? No. Oh. <laughs> What is the most important book ever written? The Bible. The Bible. Good job. And what is in the Bible? To who? Everybody. Everybody, yes, that's right. And hmm, all of God's words in the Bible are what? True. True. So are there any mistakes in the Bible? No. Why not? That's right, he cannot lie and he cannot make mistakes. So, they've learned some foundational truths. And now for our, uh, do our puppets have names? Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Jesse and, uh, <laughs> and Justin. <laughs> So uh, I have some guests here with me today. Um, they're some friends of mine. And they are Justin and Jesse. Can you guys say hi to them? Hi. I'm Soxy Roxy. I'll sock you. Now, now, no hitting. <laughs> So you're reviewing your lessons today, right? Yeah. Yes. So what have you been talking about? I don't need my trust. <laughs> We've been talking about God and his word. What's God's word? What's another name for God's word? The Bible. Yeah, we can trust the Bible, right? Yes. Yes, that's right. But do you know why we can trust the Bible? Oh, was that, oh, was that mine? That was your mine. So ahead. It's okay, buddy. Go ahead. Why can we trust God's Word? Why can we trust the Bible? Because it was true. Because it's all true? And because God can't lie. Yes, that's exactly right. I've heard that there are people who try to change God's word because they don't believe it's true. Is that right, guys? Yes. Yes. Some people have tried to take things they don't like out of God's word, and some people have tried to add their own ideas to God's word. That they're false teachers, aren't they? Yes. Uh oh. Those people are in trouble <laughs> because they are teaching the truth. That's right. Will those people be punished? Yes. yes, but God will always preserve his word. No matter how many times people try to change or even destroy God's word, God keeps it safe. You mean God's word will last forever? No one can ever mess it up. Will God's word last forever? Yes. Yes, that's what it means. What about that bad king who burned up God's word? He really got mad like this. <laughs> I don't like that word. I don't like it. <laughs> Does anyone remember what that king's name was? That hurt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> king Jehoiakim got angry when he heard God's word. And do you guys remember what he did with the scroll? He it. Yep, he ripped it up and he burned it. Students, what did God tell the prophet Jeremiah to do after the scroll was destroyed? Make another one. That's right. You told him to make another one. Ha! Even a king couldn't destroy God's word. What else did you talk about? What did you learn about God? We learned that God is a trinity. A trinity? What? A trinity. That means how many gods are there? One. But how many parts? <coughs> three. That's right. Three persons. But how can God be three... Three, but only one God. I don't get 
get it. I think I know. There is the Father. That's God in heaven. And there's the Son. That's Jesus. And there's the Holy Spirit. He lives in the hearts of those who believe in Jesus. And he helps them, too. That's very good. And all three make up one God. Wow. There's so much great stuff to know about God. Will I ever know it all? Will we ever know it all? No, because God is unsearchable and, can you remember the word? Infinite. That means we can never learn everything there is to know about God. And God is eternal. That's hard to understand, too, that God never had a beginning and never will end. It is a little confusing and hard to understand, but we trust what the Bible tells us. What about the gospel? I've heard that word. It's news or something, right? Do we remember what gospel means? Good news. Good news about Jesus. You mean the good news that Jesus came to earth to die for sinners? Yeah. And, and that he rose again? I like that part. Yep, that's the gospel. God sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for sinners. And Jesus took God's punishment for sinners. You're right. All those who turn from their sins and believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven so they can be with God in heaven. Wow! The Bible is awesome! Thanks for sharing all of this with us. May we come back again and hear more? I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> of course you guys can come back. Bye! Bye! Bye. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We rejoice. Thank you for the Sprouts. Thank you for the Sprouts teachers. Yes. And we just bless them today with your spirit of understanding, your spirit of knowledge. And Father God, we thank you for what they've already been learning. And God, let it take root and produce fruit in their lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Have a good day. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hosanna! Let me say it again. Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Father, we bless you today. We thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us to have a good day in the Word of God. Yeah. That as we open our ears and hearts to hear the Word of the Lord, let the Spirit speak and let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit has to say. And not only that, God, but let us be doers and not just hearers. And we thank you for it. All of God's people said. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. First slide, Brother Nash. Thank you, sir. Moving from ordinary to extraordinary. And so we're gonna we're gonna do this Palm Sunday version of moving from ordinary to extraordinary. Amen? Amen. All right, we're gonna go back to the Word of God, Gospel of John, chapter 12. On well, the next day, many people that would come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They did what? Verse 13. They took they went up. Climbed up the tree, cut branches of the palm trees, went forth to meet him, and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. They were cutting down palm branches, throwing them down. They were taking their coats off and throwing them down. Jesus came riding in on a donkey as a servant. And the church said, that Now, you got to picture this. Get it in your head and get it in your mind. The crowd was ecstatic. They were excited. They were motivated. We finally are going to be delivered out of the hands of the Romans. We're finally going to get freedom. We're finally going to be set free. We finally have a guy 
that can rally up the troops and take care of it. We move through Holy Week, and then Jesus is arrested. And amazingly, next verse, Brother Nash. Amazingly, many that were in that crowd shouting, Hosanna! Are now in the crowd saying, Kill him! Yes. Kill him. And all of a sudden, their whole tune changed. And they said, we have no king but Caesar. Which they would have never said under any other circumstance. So what happened? What happened was, now, I'm going to get to meddling and preaching right away. Jesus did not do what they wanted him to do the way they wanted him to do. And this ecstatic excitement of motivation turned into anger, spite, and a murderous attitude. So, how do we relate that to us today? I'm going to preach to you this morning. Just bear with me. We're trying to move from ordinary to extraordinary. The first thing that I would, just go ahead and go blank on the screen for a little while. And actually, I'll come back here a little bit. The first thing that I would instruct every single one of you is this. No matter what, don't turn away from God. Don't turn on God. And don't turn against God. Let me say that again. Don't turn away. Don't turn on him. Don't turn against him. Amen. Now, don't look at me like, oh, pastor. I'd never do that. Because if you say that, I'm going to tell you, you need to be, you need to be paying very close attention. Because let me tell you, 12 guys, that sat personally with Jesus almost every day for three and a half years, watched him perform signs and wonders that absolutely blew their mind, listened to them as they sat around the campfire as Jesus taught them things that were just out of, out of this world and they're trying to wrap their head around it. They were convinced he was the Messiah. They were convinced he had come to, to save the world. They were convinced that this is the God that we have heard about all of our lives in synagogue school about somebody coming and setting things right. And all of a sudden, one of them sold him out. And one of them that said, the rest of these losers are probably going to run from you, Jesus, but not me. Jesus warned him, and he denied Christ three times. And read your Bible, the third time, he cussed the person out for accusing him of being one of Jesus' disciples. So don't tell me you won't turn away from God. And the reason why I, I can say that with authority is because I'm guilty. I've shared this before. I'll share it again. Working at I-35 and 68 gas station, we were full service, pumping gas. I had a sweet 1973 Le Mans Sport Coupe, burgundy in color, super sweet car. And I worked until about midnight, 
And back then, that road that uh, is Montana Road now was Davis Road, and it was nothing but gravel. And I had worked the late shift, and I was tired, and I was cranky, and I was ticked off. I didn't like what God was saying about me. I didn't like God, uh, what God was wanting me to do. I didn't like the way that uh, the direction that God was wanting me to go. And I came down Davis Road that is now Montana Road. I stopped dead in my tracks. I slammed the car in park. I slammed the door open. I slammed the door closed. I don't know why I was mistreating my car. It didn't treat me wrong. It didn't do me any bad thing. And I looked up into the heavens and I told God, Leave me alone! I don't want you in my life anymore. I'm standing here today as a testimony that God did not do that. And I'm thankful. Okay? There's other times in my life that I walked away from God. No, I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to. Listen to me. You want to move from ordinary to extraordinary? Don't turn away from God. No matter, I, I, why is this happening, man? How come God's not doing something? How come God's not intervening? How come God's not interceding? Why is my life turning out this way? Why is God not doing something? Why is God not changing something? Why, is, why, why? Don't stop serving God. Don't do it. And if you haven't started, today's a good day to start. Amen. But don't do it. Let me read you one more passage of scripture. And, and I'm not going to dive into the controversial subject here of, of what this all entails. But Hebrews 6, 6 says this. I'll just let you read it. If they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucified in themselves the Son of God afresh, and put it to an open shame. So let me put it to you this way. Let me put it to you in an analogy, in a way that you and I can understand this morning. Okay? All of you that were saying Hosanna, I want you to run up here real quick, look at the cross, and scream crucify him. Go. Oh. <laughs> we mean no. Come on. Let's do it. All together. Run up here and say, crucify him. Kill him. He's a fraud! Come on! Nobody? What do you think we do when we turn away from God? Turn on God and turn against God. We have went from the Hosanna crowd to the crucifying crowd. Don't turn away. Now, I, I, I'm going to tell you this morning, Quite simply, quite frankly, I understand frustration when things aren't happening, when things aren't, aren't accelerating, when things aren't coming together like you think they should be. And God's not answering prayers in the way that you want, them to have, want them to happen. Delay is not denial. And we look at a time frame, and God sees no time frame. Don't turn away from God. No matter how bad things get in your family, in your life, in your finances, in the world, don't turn away from God. And the church said. Amen. Secondly. Don't turn away from your church. Amen. Now, notice how I said that. I said that very specifically, very explicitly. Okay? I'm not talking about turning away and, and you can go back to blank. Thanks, Nash. I'm not talking about changing churches. God transplants people. That happens. 
What I'm saying is this, and I've said this and I'll say it again. If you don't know where your church is, you need to get on your face before God and find that out. And then when you find out where your church is, where God wants you to be, then you get there and then you plant it. Yes. Amen. 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 And then you stay. Yeah. And you root. Mm -hmm. And you produce fruit. Yes. And don't you dare, listen to me, say to the most high God, don't you dare treat your church like a bad restaurant. I got bad service and I'm going to put on a one star review and I ain't never going back. Okay? But don't do that with your church. Because I can assure you this morning, I don't mean to speak negatively. I don't, but Brother Tim, bear with me as I, I prophesy in a negative fashion here, but I can guarantee you, your church is going to mess something up. Somewhere, somehow, some way, down the line, your church is going to mess something up. You know why? Because we're imperfect people. Right. Trying to serve a perfect God. Amen. So when... <laughs> I, I, I posted this on my Facebook. Okay? Let me tell you. I've been cheated... <laughs> Been mistreated. Listen, I've been I've been treated badly at Walmart. I still go back and shop there. Wouldn't it be special if we treated our church like that? Our church, my church. This is where God has set me to be. And I am staying and, until God says something different. Amen. We, 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 we have this culture in America that we just, we treat a church like, a, a, like it's some kind of a, a Costco or Walmart or Sam's Club or whatever. <clears throat> Wherever the best bargain is, that's where I'm going to go. Let's, let's go. Hey. Let's go try out a church. What? Let's go see if it has the music that I like. The preaching that I like. The, the kids programs that I like. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want a turtle pecan cluster blizzard with extra turtle and extra pecan. I want. You want? Did you ever take the chance and moment and say, God, what do you want? Well, they don't have a kids program there. Maybe God wants you to go there and start one. No, oh, I'm meddling. I know I'm meddling. Well, they don't have this program. Maybe God wants you to get in and say, Oh, Pastor, I have a program that I'd like to start. I'll take care of it. Well, that church doesn't have this. Is it where God wants you to be? Where does God want, where did God call you to go to? And if God called you to go there, that's your church. And if that's your church, now listen to me. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, they're going to nail me on, 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 Social media, but I will say it anywhere. Say it anyway. When God puts you in your church, you don't have any right to leave until God says go. Amen. Don't turn away from your church. Oh, you get frustrated with it. 
Amen. <laughs> you can get upset with it. Don't, don't that way. Moving from ordinary to extraordinary, the church said. Amen. Number three. Don't turn away and turn on and turn against your brothers and sisters in Christ. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. If they're in your church and they're serving God, they're your brothers and sisters in Christ. And again, listen to me, saints of the Most High God. I can, have, I can assure you that one of your brothers or sisters is going to act like a bonehead. <laughs> they're going to say something. They're going to do something. They're not going to say something. They're not going to do uh, something. They're going to do something that you uh, didn't want them to do. They're not going to do something that you did need for them to do. Don't turn against them just because. Just because. See what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Well, you don't understand. Here's what I understand. Are you ready for this? Thank you. We are to treat our brothers and sisters in Christ in the same way and with the same amount of grace and mercy that God treats us with. <laughs> We cannot be seen. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice and then look over and somebody that stabbed me in the back. Crucify him! Crucify him! <laughs> to worship you. Oh my kill him, Lord! Kill him! Joyce. I got to tell the story. It's a famous one. Maybe it's infamous. I don't know which one it is. We lived on Cedar. Church was on King Street. We had a family. And the family had a father and a mother and several kids. And we'd get into church service and those kids would try to kill each other. Throw hymn books at one another. Wrestling moves with one another. Suplexes, the whole thing. <laughs> and so dad was taking this family to church and back home. Had a little, I think it was a Dodge Lancer at the time. Had the family get in the car from church and it had been one of those Sundays. And dad, the guy who was the husband, father, and then the mother, wife, and then the kids in the back seat. And she's telling dad how this, this is just driving her crazy. Pulls up to the stoplight at 68 Main, heading south, and he says, just just says, you know, in, in, in an encouraging way, you you really need to calm down, sister. You're gonna wind up like sister so and so. She slapped dad three times. Pop pop pop. And if I remember right, the husband and father said, "Well, if he hits you back, I wouldn't blame him." <laughs> So dad took him home. Kid would get out, open the door, slam the door. Next kid would get out, open the door, slam the door. Next kid would get out, open the door, slam the door. And the husband and wife got out, and they walked in front of his Dodge Lancer, which was a manual shift. And the devil said, pop the clutch. <laughs> Go ahead, just pop the clutch. You don't have to kill her, just pop it. Pop the clutch. 
Dad went home and made the announcement. Stay away from her. She has touched God's anointed. God is going to kill her, and I don't want any of my family near her and have collateral damage. Stay away. Dad worked construction at the same time. He was bivocational. Come home from work. Walk in the front door. There's mom. There she is. And he'd look at her. Do a right 90 degree turn into the bedroom. And slam the door. And he'd warn mom. You need to have, some, have her in this house. God may burn the whole house down when he kills her. Oh, let her in. Day after day after day, week after week after week, month after month. Dad's coming home from Lawrence, and at that time, 59 Highway was that dangerous two lane with no shoulder. And Dad began to pray. Lord, I've noticed something. My sermons just don't have that pop and fire that they used to. You know, it's just, I just, I, Kind of like I'm going through the motions. And God, I know what the problem is. It's that woman that struck your anointing and you haven't done anything about it. She struck your anointing. And God, with his booming voice in his inner spirit, said, And you want to kill her. Oops. So dad pulled over the side of the road as far off the highway as he could, opened up the hood to make it look like he had car trouble, and knelt down and began to pray and began to weep before God. God, I'm wrong. Amen. <clears throat> this voice spoke. Sir, can I help you? And Dad looked up, and it was a trooper. If you got car trouble, Dad said, no. I had heart trouble. But I've got it right with God. And the trooper said, sir, do me a favor. He said, what's that? Next time you have heart trouble, would you pull off of a side road? I'd hate for you to get killed before you get it right with God. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes home, walks in the front door just like every other day before. And there she was. He went over and knelt down before her and said, lady, please forgive me. Oh no, Pastor, Pastor, please forgive me. I'm the one that's wrong. I'm the one. I shouldn't have done that. I, I was... No, listen. Just let me apologize. Let me get right. And the fire and the pot returned. She never changed. Don't Turn on, turn away from, or turn against your brothers and sisters just because they mess up. Amen. Amen. Because I guarantee you, you're going to mess up too. Amen. Amen. You're going to say it or not say it or do it or not do it at one of these times. If we're going to move from, listen to me, if we're going to move from ordinary to extraordinary, what, 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 what do we just preach? Unity and harmony with God, with the church, and with each other. We don't have to see, quote, eye to eye and agree on every issue and every biblical doctrine, every political theory. We don't have to agree on all that stuff. All we have to say is, don't mean nothing to me. Yeah. Amen. I, just want, I just want to hug you Sunday morning. That's all I want to do. Yeah. 
Should I do the fourth? Yes. Okay. Don't turn away. Don't turn on. And don't turn against your pastor. <laughs> now notice how I said that again. If I'm not your pastor, please don't turn on me and turn against me anyway. But if I'm not your pastor, then you need to get on your face before God and say, God, who is my pastor so that I can serve with them? Notice how I said that? I don't, I don't think I said serve under him. I think I said serve with him. Amen. Who's, who, if, if I'm your pastor, trust me, I'm a bonehead. <laughs> I'm gonna make I, I'm gonna make mistakes, and I'm gonna tell you this morning I have made some epic ones in my life, huge, ginormous, gigantic mistakes in my life. You can say amen. It's okay. Go ahead and say amen to that. Amen. I'm just talking about last week <laughs> and the week before. And the week before. And I, I know for a fact that it may have not been intentional, but I've probably done or said or didn't do or didn't say something that should have been or should not have been to most of you in here. Sorry. I'm not making an excuse. I'm just sorry. Because guess what? I'm as imperfect as you are. Oh, the pastor's anointed, called from up on high. We hold, yeah, I, I get that. You hold to uh, you hold to a higher standard, but just remember, in the end, it's still flesh and blood. Amen. 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 It's still flesh and blood. I don't, I don't, I don't like the way you do this. Okay. Okay. I will tell you, I'm always open for suggestions. I am. I, I certainly am. But listen to me. Let me let me help you help me. Amen. If your suggestion is merely an issue of preference and just takes us sideways, eh. But if your suggestion is something that I should strongly consider that will cause us to elevate. I'm all ears. Amen. Do you notice the difference? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. I think we need to sing more of these type of songs. Okay, that's a preference. Yeah, right. Amen. That's just going sideways. Right. Some of you may like those songs. Some of you may not like those songs. But if you say, Daryl, Can you sing that song, I Just Want to Speak? This morning? Can you sing, I Just Want to Speak the Name of Jesus? I don't know what's on your list, but I could really use it this morning. You know what you're doing? You're elevating. Now, if 50 of you come up to him with 50 different requests. I wish you, I wish you'd preach this. I wish you'd preach that. I'm getting there. I've, I've shared this before. I when I first started as, as a full-time staff member. I was it. I was kind of a big deal because I was going to be T.D. Jakes, Rod Parsley, Oral Roberts, and Billy Graham all in one nice super tight package. And I tried being all four of them at the same time. You could say I was suffering from multiple preacher disorder. <laughs> and 
God finally spoke to me and said, who are you? Because you're not who I may have made out to be. Stop trying, stop trying to be somebody that you're not. You be you and let me mold you and shape you and form you. Hello, somebody. From ordinary to extraordinary, we 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 can get frustrated. I get that, but folks, we don't give up on God. Amen. We don't give up on our church. Amen. We don't give up on our brothers and sisters of Christ, and we don't give up on our pastor. Now, how do we achieve this? There's only one way that I know that all of us can achieve this today. Now, listen, well, we've got people here that they they're still trying to figure this out. There's no condemnation. I want you to understand it. There's no condemnation. We're all still trying to figure this out. But once you get there, there's only one way to solve this problem. Put that last picture on, Nash. Burn the ship. Burn the ship. I'm here. That's it. I'm done. There's no more decisions for me to make. I'm where God wants me to be. And I'm going to do what God has called me to be. And I'm going to do it with my church, my people, my brothers and sisters of Christ, and my pastor. Burn the ship. I ain't leaving until God, until God builds another ship and comes and rescues me. Amen. Burn the ships. Well, I'm not moving. I'm not leaving. Because I, I, I spoke about this and we prayed about this. I'm telling you, there has been forces that are trying. Listen to me. I, 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 I pray that you hear what the Spirit has to say this morning. There are forces that have been at work that have been trying and at some point successful pitting us against one another. You know, when, when you get into that situation, isn't it amazing how the little, tiniest little thing becomes absolutely gigantic? You know, Daryl said, you ought to praise him, and he looked right at me. And I ain't going back until he, he asks forgiveness. <laughs> and you think, I'm, you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Because when, when Satan moves and begins to irritate, frustrate, we become easily offended. And looking for the offense. Amen. Go ahead. Make my day. I dare you. I dare you not to shake my hand today. Because if you don't, I know. How many would say? It's time to move from ordinary to extraordinary. It's time for me to start burning ships. Amen. Amen. And the church said. Amen. Next, go ahead and put that one on. And if you would bow your heads and close your eyes this morning. Number one. If you're here and you have turned away from God, or maybe you have turned on God, or maybe you have turned against God, I want you to hear me this morning. There is no condemnation coming from me. I've been there and done it already.
But if you're in that position and condition today, I implore you with all the energy and force that I can, get it right today. Get it right today. You may not have anything else figured out, but get that figured out today. If you're wondering where your church is, get that figured out. And get God figured out first and foremost. If you're wondering where your brothers and sisters are, get that figured out. But get God figured out first. If you're wondering who your pastor is, get that figured out. But get God figured out first and foremost. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But I'm going to ask you to come forward this morning. If you're here, very simply, very simple. If you're in a condition where you and God are not in a right relationship because of whatever, today is the day to change the entire direction. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are here. That God, if they're here and they say, I, yeah, that's me, God. God is, um, God and I are just not getting along right now. And we need to. I pray that you would move in their heart and move on them to get it right today. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, nothing else is going to happen right here until this is done. If you're here and you say, I need to get right with God today, I want you to step out, come forward, and let us pray with you and let us pray for you. In Jesus' name. Anybody in the house, now is the opportunity to do it. And we're going to wait until I feel God release. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Brother, if you would just come right over here and have a seat. Brother Daryl, Brother Jerry, would you come? In the name of Jesus. Roxy, you want to come forward in the name of Jesus? Sister Cheryl, in the name of Jesus over here, we're going to just take Brother Will over there where he can have a seat somewhere. Anybody else this morning? In the name of Jesus, there's still room at the cross for you. We're going to let these be ministered to in the name of Jesus this morning. Father, we thank you.
Thank you, Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Anybody else? There's still time. We're not going to rush out of here. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Doing some good things today, God. Hosanna. Come now, Lord, and save us. In Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. Can you be patient for a little while longer? Is that all right? All right, hang in there for a minute. Miss yet, folks. I, I believe God still got something to do this morning. But would you join with me in prayer? So, uh, those of you that are kind of familiar, Jenna is is out of the last part of this chemo, and it's taken her it's it's, it's uh, purpose is to take her white count to zero. That way, she can receive the stem cells. She's really struggling with them, really sick because it's some strong stuff. So, would you pray with me? for her this morning. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift Jenna up. God, you just infiltrate that room where she's at right now. The nausea, the sickness, the uh, uh, just the blacking feeling. And God, in the name of Jesus, get this part done and begin her a quick recovery. In the name of Jesus, heal and make whole. And we thank you for her right now. In Jesus' name. Minister God. Minister peace to her mind, her spirit, her soul, and peace to her body. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Brother, I don't want to embarrass you. Can I pray with you again? Is that okay? Would you come up front? Darrell, would you come up front this morning? Would you just join with me in prayer? In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for Nevin this morning in the name of Jesus. And God, I break every influence that is trying to drag him every which way but loose. In the name of Jesus, whether it's be friends, uh, situations, circumstances, demonic forces, I command it to stop. And I set him free today, delivered by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I said the blood of Jesus. Our Lord and Savior, we confess Jesus has come in the flesh and Satan has no more dominion. Loose your hold and he is set free today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.
Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. And the Lord give you peace. The Lord give you peace. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great afternoon. See you tonight.